Uh, these are the Math 3 Chapter uh, 3 test corrections. We took this on December 4, 2015. Directions show all your work and space provided in box for answers. Um, Bradley has $175 to spend at the electronics store. He decides to buy uh, video games and DVDs with his money. Video games cost $40 each and DVDs cost $15 each. Write an equation to represent this problem situation. Use V to represent the number of video games and D to represent the number of DVDs. So the correct answer is $40 per video game, so 40V plus 15D. $15 per DVD equals 175. If you wrote V plus D equals 150, I gave you three points out of four. That's not correct because it tells you a price per an item. Question number two. If Bradley buys two video games, what is the greatest number of DVDs he can buy? Show your work and explain your reasoning. Well, two video games means V is equal to two. So here's the reason why you would use equations. You can substitute in there two. 40 times two is 80. Um, on video games, if you subtract 80, that means you can spend $95 on DVDs. Well, if you divide uh, 15 on both sides, you'll get something like 6.3. Now, can you buy a partial of a DVD? No, in this case, you'll round down, so your answer is he can buy 6 DVDs. Question uh, 1C. Uh, if Bradley buys no DVDs, what is the greatest number of video games he can buy? Show your work and explain reasoning. No DVDs means D is equal to zero. So he's spending zero money on DVDs, which means that you now have uh, $175 spent on video games. Video games are $40 each, so divide both sides by 40. And you'll recognize that you'll get something like 4.3. So you have to round down. Uh, he can buy four video games. Question number two. Solve the formula A equals P times parentheses 1 plus RT for R. Okay? What this is telling you is it says solve for R. That means you need to get R by itself. There's a couple of ways of doing that. I'll show you guys one of them. Uh, one of the ways is um, you can distribute the P. So P times 1 is P. P times RT is PRT. Notice here the R. So you can subtract P from both sides. This will equal uh, 0. So you have A minus P equals PRT. Notice when the letters are next to each other, that's multiplication. So you can divide both sides by PT. And you get R is equal to A minus P over uh, PT. Now I believe one student tried a different method. And I showed uh, the work over here. Uh, once you distribute, uh, you subtracted A minus uh, PRT here. Notice how the R is still there. Um, so you're kind of bouncing back and forth. You subtract A to both sides. Divide by negative PT. Uh, notice how when you're doing that part, it's negative PT to both of these. And the P's here will cancel. When you cancel everything, there's still a 1 left there. So their answer to that would be negative 1 over T minus A over PT. Question number 3A, write the equation 5X plus 2Y equals negative 6 in slope-intercept form. Same thing as we did in the last video. You're trying to get Y by itself here. That's what it means to be slope-intercept form. I'm subtracting 5X to both sides. I'm left with 2Y equals negative 5X minus 6. Remember, to get rid of this 2, you're going to have to divide the whole left side by 2 and the whole right side by 2. When you're dividing the whole right side by 2, you can kind of separate it if it helps you. That's negative 5x divided by 2, and this is a negative 6 divided by 2. Uh, this will get us, um, these will cancel. y is equal to negative 5 halves uh, x minus 3 is your answer. Now, you can use this to graph. So I would say if you're receiving a passing grade for this class, you should be able to solve for an equation, like we did here in 3A, and you should be able to graph it. This is in slope-intercept form because you have the y by itself. The one without an x, that's your y-intercept. So notice here I have a dot here at minus 3. You received two points if you got that. And this negative uh, 5 halves is your slope, rise over run. Well, you're saying, well, where does that negative go? 
when they usually write it, it's in between with the fraction line, but you can actually assign the negative to the numerator, the top, or to the bottom, the denominator. So um, I chose to assign it towards the bottom. Here's the reason why. I ran out of graphing space. If I did down uh, uh, rise over 1, if I did down 5, right 2, I run out of space, so I said positive 5 over negative 2. Up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, left 2, 1, 2. And that's how I got it. Now, some of you may have actually graphed it by intercepts, which is totally fine. Make x equals to 0 and y equals to 0, and you can get a graph. Um, remember, if you get the y-intercept in that problem correct, it'll give you 2 points. Or if you have the slope is correct, it'll give you 2 points. If you have a slope and a y-intercept correct, but your graph is not, I'll give you 3 points out of 4. That side was out of 24. Go ahead and turn to the back side. I believe these questions were very similar to the quiz number, uh, I think, we took in this class number 11. Mr. Wendell operates a concession stand at the park. He charges $3.25 for a hot dog, and each month, four lucky customers get a free hot dog. He always sells more hot dogs than he gives away. Write a linear equation to represent the amount of money Mr. Wendell earns each month. Let x represent the number of hot dogs. So there's two ways you can write this function. Um, <clears throat> you can say $3.25 per hot dog, 3.25x, and then minus 13. The minus 13 is the four hot dogs he's giving away, right? He's losing money. Or you can say, um, here, this is the number of hot dogs you'll sell, but you have to subtract four because you're kind of giving those four away. That's kind of like a minus, right? You're losing money, and then you can just uh, multiply that by 3.25. If you wrote just 3.25x or something like 3.25x minus 4, I give you guys 3 points out of 4. Question number um, 4b. How much would Mr. Wendell earn in a month if he distributed five, 55 hot dogs out to customers? Well, if you're... If he passes out 55 hot dogs, you have to subtract the four that he gave away. So really, you're only making profit on 51 of those. So 51 times 325 would have gotten you $165.75. Uh, if you were multiplying 55 times 3.25, I gave you guys um, three points because you forgot to subtract the four hot dogs that he's giving away for free. Next month, Mr. Wendell decides to also sell hamburgers for $4.75 each. Each month, two lucky uh, pastor buyers get a free hamburger. He always sells more hamburgers than he gives away. Write a linear function to represent the amount of money Mr. Wendell earns each month for hamburger sales. Uh, use X for the number of uh, hamburgers distributed. So again, that's $4.75 uh, per hamburger, that's X, minus $9.50. $9.50 represents the two hamburgers he's giving away for free. Or you can think of it as 4.75 uh, times the expression X minus 2. This will tell you how many, um, if you put in there, how many hot dogs <coughs> you subtract, or ha hamburgers, you subtract the two hamburgers you're giving away for free. That'll be your profit, and you multiply that by 4.75. I think only a couple of students got this next question right. Mr. Wendell writes a function for the total amount of money he will earn for selling both types of sandwiches. His work is shown below. Mr. Is Mr. Wendell correct or not? So H represents the uh, hamburgers, uh, hot dogs, and B stands for burgers. So you're asking, can I, um, can I add these two functions together and then combine like terms and get 8x minus 225? Well, in the previous problem there, X represents hot dogs and hamburgers. So Mr. Wendell's function is wrong. He's wrong because we don't know X represents two things, hamburgers or hot dogs. We're not sure which one. So again, this one's not multiple choice. You know it's not multiple choice because it doesn't say multiple choice, doesn't say pick one, doesn't even say, um, you know, circle the error, okay? Um, so you just have to along, along with that thinking. Question number five, uh, fill in the blank uh, for this Ken Ken. I think it was actually the same one on your quiz. Is that right? And the last question, uh, write the equation y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 7 in standard form. 
So standard form, if you want to write that in your formula sheet, is ax plus by equals c. Standard form basically means that you have uh, you have both variables x and y on one side. Notice here you have slope intercept form. So to get both of the variables on one side, you're going to have to add 2 thirds x. These will cancel and you're left with 2 thirds x plus y equals negative 7. If you got that far, I gave you 2 points out of 4. We learned in standard form you can't have fractions. Everyone say no fractions. No. To get rid of this fraction, well look at this, fraction, no fraction, no fraction. So you have this 3 here. So just take that number and multiply by 3. I'm multiplying both sides by 3. 3 times 2 thirds will give us 2. Remember you can make 3 a fraction by putting over 1. This will become 3 times 2 is 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now you also need to distribute that 3 to the second expression will give us 3y. So 3 times 2 thirds will give us 2x and 3 times uh, y will give us 3y. Over here that will be 3 times negative 7 that will give us negative 21. That side was uh, 24 points and the test was at a 48.